Welcome to the Baltimore Times Podcast. I'm your host, Finesse Demps. And as we always do, we like to bring you interesting people, the real movers and shakers that maybe you don't know about, but you're going to know something about them. And today we are getting into the tech world because, you know, times are changing, folks. You have watches you can wear as tech. You have the VR headphones that you can wear as tech. So much is up and moving, but it's nice to see when our people of color Splash, especially black women are taking the lead. My guest today is Miss Lakeisha Greenwood. She is the owner and founder of Wearable Tech Ventures Incorporated. She joins us to talk more about what it is her company does and an interesting event she has going on. I believe it's called Hackathon. We're going to get in. We're going to get in that discussion as well. But Miss Lakeisha, welcome to the show. How are you? Thank you so much. I'm honored to be here and I'm doing so much better now that I can share this good news with the community. All right. Speaking of good news, let's 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 go to the beginning. Young black woman like you, how do you get involved in tech? I got involved in tech totally by inspiration um, and also by a need to make sure that our people could be seen as the influencers, innovators, and geniuses that they truly are. Um, I was recovering from surgery in 2015, and I thought I wanted to develop a product for myself and ultimately sell it to a larger manufacturer, but Purpose called after the murder of Freddie Gray, and I did Mm. not like how we were portrayed in the media. And as a result, I was on the ground reporting and reporting on social media, and people were sending resources and other things to the city because they saw that what I was reporting was vastly different from what the mass media was reporting. And so as a result of that, I wanted to find a way that we could put our genius on display. And I thought about fashion and tech, and this was before tech was even in Baltimore, um, and understanding the unique history of fashion in Baltimore. And I basically explored and self-funded that first initiative Uh, which was called Glam Tech, and it was a wearable tech expo. But I brought in Beyonce's fashion director, Ty Hunter, as well as a talent that works in many celebrity camps, such as Diddy's and folks from Forbes, and um, brought some folks together. I called on Micah, some Micah professors, and local business manufacturers, local folks in the community to say, let's take a look at this. Is there something here? And as a result... Um, I've had folks specifically from Usher's camp and some other, you know, Usher the Celebrities camp and other folks that said they have never seen or experienced anything like what I put together and they told me to keep going. And so as a result, I've been going since 2015. So explain something about the glam tech, because I think I vaguely remember this due to my connections in the entertainment world. I believe I saw some of that, but explain to everyone what that was. So when I launched that in 2015, well, and and actually launched in 2016, I should say, um, it was more so a focus on some of the local talent in the fashion world here. I brought in community leaders. We had discussions about the impact of what could fashion and tech actually look like. Um, And then we had some examples uh, that were put on display. And as a result of that, Uh, A year later, um, I was invited to curate Maryland's first wearable tech fashion show uh, for Light City. And I'm not sure if Baltimore does Light City anymore, Um, but I was the first to curate that in the state. (laughs) And then um, and then I got the attention of South by Southwest and uh, became one of their notable speakers to discuss the concept of wearable technology. And then I won Innovator of the Year in Baltimore. And so just started traveling and really exploring, uh, talking to a number of different folks around the country um, about the industry, and then really looked at discovering how could we develop a pipeline of talent starting here in Baltimore. And thankfully, I reached out to St. Francis Community Center in West Baltimore, and their youth worked with me as well as with some other business owners as we Um, curated uh, the beginning of that pipeline. And now we have a relationship with University of Maryland, Baltimore County. And so we've been working with them for four years. So we have a pipeline where we work with middle and high school students um, every summer 
in partnership with UMBC and my organization curates the curriculum. Uh, UMBC is a partner that helps to house from a facilitative standpoint of, um, uh, I guess you could say location as well as with some marketing. And now we've gained international interest um, based off of, you know, some of the work that we started there. And now we've also um, grown to a point where we have advisors that are the leaders um, as far as designing and manufacturing wearable technology around the world. And uh, we have that representation so that we can support existing founders and also future founders. So we truly are an ecosystem. And what that really means is it's uh, like a sub-industry, if you will, where we have talent, we have founders, we have folks that are from the actual corporations, we have investors, um, government organizations, we have a strong partnership with the National Institutes of Health, NIH, um, as well as other government organizations, and we work together to identify problems that need to be solved, but then also identifying a way to educate and to promote uh, underrepresented talent to come to the table and bring their unique selves so that we can solve these problems together. Uh, You mentioned a couple of times about underserved communities. What are some of the things when it comes to tech, speaking uh, uh, solely of tech, what are some of the uh, things that you see is missing in our community? Well, if we start from the tech lens, everyone knows tech is overall not diverse. When people think of tech, oftentimes they think of a white boy working out of his garage in California or somewhere in Seattle, right? Um, And somehow these particular beings um, work hard in their garage and then they become the next Bill Gates. So there's a disconnect because we as a people often do not see ourselves as those that can develop something and then become um, uh, wealthy in the process of doing that. So representation is one piece of that. And then also when we look at our community, there's a stigma where most folks don't consider themselves to be tech worthy or to be a contributor to tech. In our community, what I have found is that most people think of themselves more so as a consumer, meaning, um, yes, they could download an app and they'll learn how to work it. Yes, they could get a new phone and they'll learn how to work it. But because uh, there haven't been many superheroes or any Hmm. suggestions to do things outside of putting kids in a camp to code, there really hasn't been a mapped out pathway. And so that's where we come in to say, hey, here's a particular segment in the tech industry, specifically the wearable tech industry, that is one of the fastest growing segments where we know it's going to really impact what we do every day from meeting with people to talking on the phone. Like today, we talk on cell phones. In the future, you're going to be talking and meeting with people from glasses on your eyes um, to even getting dressed on social media. Today, people wear real clothes. In the future, there's digital clothing. And I've even designed digital clothing. So here's an opportunity in a particular segment of tech where we can come to the table and say, we no longer have to live by the old bylines where tech is not diverse. We have a new opportunity to say, in wearable technology, we have a viable pipeline that actually started in Baltimore (laughs) by Mm. a Black woman And we are making sure that people that were never invited to the table before are invited to contribute their ideas, patent them, invest in them, and win. You know, I'm I'm glad you said the words diversity and diverse, because the way you and I see it as Black people, we see the meaning of diversity and diverse being different. Can you explain the the listening audience in your eyes and especially dealing in your field what is diversity and diverse what does that mean to you great question so of course being people of color we know that there's a a tremendous opportunity to have better representation from people of color in the standpoint of tech leadership thought leadership as well as from the founder space right 
But then I often tell folks that I don't like to be put in a box. And I understand there are amazing initiatives going on where they're, you know, for Black girls or for Black boys only. But I represent the voice and the people that have never really been invited to the table. So that includes other ethnicities, okay? Um, That also includes people of differing abilities, as well as with their personal behavioral preferences, um, you know, they have been known with other communities. So that's what I'm talking about. And I'm pleased that my message has been received. We work with founders. I recently just spoke with a founder in Sweden. We work with founders in Brazil. We have a founder in Brazil that has ADHD and obtained mm. his PhD and is now working on an exergate, right? So, you know, we have founders like that as well as, Balt- uh, as, as, well as Baltimore bread founders that are developing things in the metaverse. We have founders that never graduated high school, went, you know, thought that, that people threw them away, thought that they would never ever become anything. And now they're multimillionaires and developing AR and VR apps. So when I talk about diverse, that's what I'm saying. Those variety of experiences that are worthy to come to the table to shape what we use on an everyday basis. And why is that important? So for instance, when you have a different experience coming to the table to design a product, the Mm. overall output and effect is going to be totally different. And this is even important from a collection of data. If we want to get into ethics, it's important to have that, that perspective there. So for instance, we're doing a project now with the National Institutes of Health and we were recruiting uh, researchers as well as creatives and founders to come together to solve an initiative around um, dementia and Alzheimer's and um, to provide some solutions even from the wearable tech example. Well, little did I know when I was a little girl and I used to babysit my great grandmother who had Alzheimer's and she used to wear that little band around her neck, that little necklace around her neck, the medical alert. Mm-hmm. Little did I know that that would be my first introduction with wearable technology. And now I'm at the table with the actual researchers with funding and to say, what else can we do to support those that may suffer from this disease um, and their families? What are some things that we can create? And so now we have a wide option of solutions outside of watches and bands and necklaces, but there are other devices Um, and some modalities that are being created because we have perspectives like mine, those that have dealt with it one-on-one. And often uh, these people, including myself, have never been included in data and or research. And I've often called major institutions to the table. And although they are amazing and they come out with a lot of innovations, but if we look at early studies from wearables that have entered the market, and specifically some of those that were done at MIT, A lot of the data was only conducted on white males. So here Mm. we are as an organization to say, we're here, we're included, not only from the table of ideation, but research, right? And and pushing all these things together, you know, say it may take time, but we're going to get there. And by 2030, we're going to have at least, at least 100 startups that we could say, Wearable Tech Ventures has touched these startups in some sort of way. We've either mentored, advised, introduced them to investors or corporations that have bought or licensed their ideas, um, and or maybe even partnered with other organizations to amplify that startup so that they can grow their revenue. That's going to be our success story by 2030, and then we're going to grow from there. I want to stand up and give you a standing ovation. I love it. <laughs> uh, before we go... Before we go any further, I like to give my guests the opportunity to share their social media yes. and their website so people can follow them. So can you p- please share that with the listening audience? Absolutely. Please join us at wearabletechventures.org. And then also that's our social media handle. And then also my personal is Lakeisha Greenway, L-A-K-I-S-H-A. G R E E N W A D E on Instagram, and I believe it's Coach L Greenway on Facebook. But I would encourage the audience here to plug in and connect with us. Connect with us, one, to figure out what we're doing, to get new updates. 
but then also give yourself the opportunity to, to participate in some of our free activities, such as one that's sponsored by the Boeing Company, July 25th through the 29th. It's called Tech Remix. It's a hackathon. And basically, it's not a bad thing, but what it is is we come up, we come together, we introduce you to some business problems, and then we provide you with some training. And some of our participants will be able to partake in workshops where they can learn how to develop a mobile app, where they can learn how to develop a bot, but then also use some of those components to develop an idea and technology. And then most importantly, learn how to pitch it. And then we'll Mm -hmm. identify some of those ideas that are really, really good um, that may be ready to, you know, receive some additional uh, advising so that, you know, we can work with those potential founders with the ultimate goal of bringing it to market. But the most important thing by connecting with us at Wearable Tech Ventures, at, as well as at Lakeisha Greenway, the most important thing is that we're able to help those that tune in with us to understand that they belong at the table and that their perspective is valued. Well, first of all, I'm glad you explained what Hackathon is, because I thought it was Hackersack. That shows you <laughs> how old I am uh, <laughs> with that. But uh, the, the, my question is, is this an all age group or is there a certain age for this event? Great question. Everyone's invited. Oftentimes people tend to say, oh, it's only for the youth. And even though we do have specific youth programming. Um, so we say that if you're age 13 and up, you can attend. Mm-hmm. And, so- and where would it be held? It's actually virtual, so you can participate from the comfort of your home as long as you have internet access and preferably if you have a computer. We ha- we'll we we'll train folks. We're going to have an opening ceremony, closing ceremony. There'll be some parties. There'll be some workshops. And you have the opportunity to meet new people, to work with people, and more, more than anything, learn more about yourself and perhaps open up some areas in your life where you might say, I may have had an idea at one point in time, but I had no idea where to go or how to develop it. Now, you know, you could come to Wearable Tech Ventures, participate in this free platform, such as what we're doing, and have that opportunity to use your imagination and apply that to solving a real world problem. I like the fact that you have youth programs. Can you talk more about the uh, why that's important to you and the different programs that you do have for the youth? Absolutely. So we have um, two programs in place right now for the youth. One is the youth camp, which we do in partnership with the University of Maryland, Baltimore County. And so actually that camp is taking place in July. So you have to register through that particular site um, with UNBC. But then we also identify talented youth that perhaps we can further groom into founders and they come into what we call our youth ambassador program. So these youth ambassadors are trained so that they can do some fundraising. They have direct contact to all of our advisors, like all of our founders. So imagine being 13 or 14 and you have access to some of the VPs at some of the top Fortune 100 companies of the world. That's the access we give them. (laughs) So Mm -hmm. they have ideas. And so they have this community where they can grow. Um, And so we just work with them, you know, throughout the process so that they can also mentor others. We're a big organization that's cyclical. We give back. Everybody gives back um, so that we can make sure we keep the organization going, but then also further our ecosystem so that we can promote and and make make this industry successful. You have such a beautiful spirit. And I like what I'm hearing about wearable tech ventures. Uh, But I have to ask this question. Yes. What drives Lakeisha? What drives Lakeisha to be this kind of person and then be all about the community? Thank you so much. I appreciate that. It's more so developing with purpose. I mm-hmm. realize that in the past, many products have come to the market that were just gimmicks. And we have an opportunity to truly develop with purpose. And ultimately, when we develop with purpose, solving real everyday problems, and we have real people from um, a variety of different backgrounds, just how much better the world is going to be. Mm-hmm. That's that's the thing that drives me. Um, and making sure that someone else's life is better because they were seen and they were heard in a world that often likes to overlook them. 
Right. And is that the, is that where Protect Ventures mission statement by any chance? Actually, is that it's actually we are developing and promoting wearables, and we are also developing a new generation of innovators, investors, um, and inventors. Okay. And is there an email or a phone number if people want to reach out to you directly? Maybe they want to sponsor or donate. How can they get in contact with you to help you push this dream forward? Absolutely. If you go to wearabletechventures.org, you can donate directly on our website. And yes, we welcome all donations, whether they are monetary or in the form of your time, um, because it takes a lot to do this, right? Mm -hmm. So we welcome that. And then also for email, you can email us at hello at wearabletechventures.com. So you can send that message directly on our webpage, or you can send that via email. And in many cases, we're asking everyone to please go to the website, uh, www.wearabletechventures.org. And that way, if you are in the ecosystem or aspire to be in the ecosystem, you can fill out a form so that we know who you are. That data is very important to us. You can also donate. You can volunteer. It's pretty much a one-stop shop. And you get an idea of what upcoming programs we have. Plus, you can look at some of the past programs we've held virtually. All right. And one more time, let everybody know when Hackathon is. Not July. Hack Fact. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the Hackathon, the Tech Remix Hackathon is July 25th through the 29th and it is virtual our opening ceremony is going to be at lunchtime and you have the opportunity to choose the times that you participate throughout the week typically hackathons are you know 72 hours but we made it throughout the week so that folks can join the team so if you find that you could work better in the morning you could work better in the afternoon or you work better in the evening or late at night you could join a team that matches that and the, the only requirement is that you meet with your team and pitch on that last day and share your ideas. So you have to register uh, by July the 24th. So we gave you some time in case you find out about this a little bit late. And then we start that July 25th through the 29th. And it's an amazing experience. And I just also want to thank our um, our corporate sponsor, the Boeing Company, for all the resources that they've given us to make this happen. And I also want to thank the Baltimore Times for being our media sponsor. This is an amazing effort, and we're so proud to launch this historic event with such an amazing, amazing family-owned brand in the city. We are so honored to be a part of what you're doing at Wearable Tech. One more thing before I go, because you have a very energetic and positive crew that works with you. Yes. I want to give you the opportunity for your board okay. members. You want to give them a shout out. Oh, all of my advisors, um, and we have advisors that are listed on our website. You can look at our team. We also have advisors that are not listed on our team <laughs> on the website um, just because of security and stuff. Like we get into high tech stuff, so we like to protect our folks. But I, um, I just want to thank every single one of them, especially those that have been with me on this journey since the very beginning. And it's been a long time. So when you consider starting this in 2015, 2016, putting my own money in, and then, you know, we started getting more corporate uh, representation in 2019, it's been a journey. And for them to be willing to listen to me, to understand that there truly is something viable here, and to understand that we had to take a non-traditional route, I'm incredibly grateful. This work is not for the faint of heart. But I know that we have the right people at the table to take this to the moon. All right, Miss Lakeisha Greenwood. And in the words of Biggie, it was all a dream. You're doing your thing, girl. You're doing Thank your thing. Thank you. Thank you. I actually have that on my wall. I made that art during the <laughs> pandemic and put it on the wall because it's true. It was all a dream. That's, that's right. <laughs> it sure is. People don't understand hip hop give you the inspiration. You yes. just got to be listening for it. Exactly. But, uh, Thank you for being on the podcast today. I am actually going to register because there's something yes. I, wanted to, I wanted to develop and I want to see if I can do it on my it's own great. app. It's so we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna get on and see what we can do. I'm excited. Thank you so much. So everyone tell somebody else and register, register, register. This is, this is unique in that this is an opportunity that often is done in Europe or at many of the Ivy League universities. And a lot of times we never hear about this or have the opportunity to participate. But also this was curated in mind, with us in mind. 
So mm. definitely register and thank you so much. No problem. Uh, well, that's going to do it for this edition of the Baltimore Time Podcast. Miss Lakeisha Greenwood, make sure you go check out Wearable Tech Ventures. Make sure you uh, incorporate, by the way, and make sure you register because I'm going to register. I'm going to get my own app and Lakeisha's going to get it, help me get it so we can wear it. Yeah. You already know what it's going to be, folks, but we're going to see what we're going to come up with. But uh, until we meet again on the Baltimore Times podcast, you have yourself a great and pleasant day. Peace.